Welcome to Learn Free Music Theory, lesson number 34. In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about intervals a little bit more in depth. On um, We're going to introduce some new concepts. I'm also going to review a little bit, uh, but basically what we're going to be covering today is uh, two things. One is inharmonic changes, okay? So basically an inharmonic change in an interval, and then also we're going to be covering um, basically inverting or, yeah, basically inverting, inverting intervals. Okay, so basically just flipping them around. And that's mainly what we're going to be discussing in this video. So let's get right into it. Okay, so the first thing I want to introduce here with the intervals, because this is going to help you out, uh, especially with what we're going to be doing with intervals for the next couple lessons here, is an interval chart. And now that you know what all the different interval types are in previous uh, levels, if you haven't watched those, um, go watch them. If not, if you, and if you don't remember, you can always go back and review. So, um, okay, so this chart here has all like, um, these are what we would call simple or basic intervals and they go up to a perfect eighth or an octave. After you get over perfect eighths, then they become compound intervals. So we're gonna get into that in the next lesson, but in this lesson, we're covering basic intervals, and so this is a nice little chart here to show you what all the semitones will equal. So, in other words, okay, say you are going from D to D. That's no semitones, no semitones at all. So, zero semitones is a perfect first. So, D to D is a perfect first. But you could go D to E flat, uh, D to E double flat, <laughs> okay? And that would be uh, basically uh, still, that would still be uh, zero intervals, but it would be a minor second because you're going from D to E. So D to E double, double flat would be uh, an interval of a diminished second. So as you can see over here, the zero is for diminished and the X is for augmented. So these are like the standard intervals going through here. And then on top, I have another term, like another interval that it could be called by. So a perfect first or zero semitones can be either a perfect first or a minor or a diminished second. One semitone can pretty much only be, I mean, I guess it could be an augmented um, perfect first. Actually, I just thought of that. Yeah, that could also be an augmented perfect first, but that's going to be pretty rare. Anyway. <laughs> So minor second is usually going to be one semitone. So uh, diminished third or major second is going to be two semitones. Augmented second or minor third is going to be three semitones. Major third is going to be four semitones. Now this won't be a diminished. Uh, actually, the minor, th the major third also. I guess I didn't really think to put those on. This could be actually. Um, a diminished fourth, or this could be a augmented fifth over there. Darn it. <laughs> oh well. Okay, so yeah, I make mistakes too. I don't know. But anyway, uh, so basically, four interval or four semitones can be major third, or it could be a, per a diminished uh, fourth. Now, five semitones is going to either get you a perfect fourth or an augmented third, okay? Diminished sixth or perfect fifth are going to be seven uh, semitones, okay? And then eight semitones is minor sixth or perfect or uh, augmented fifth. Now I'll leave this one for the last over here. Nine semitones is six, uh, major sixth or diminished seventh. Ten semitones is minor seventh or augmented sixth. Uh, 11 semitones, major 7th or diminished 8th, and 12 semitones, perfect 8th or augmented 7th, okay? Now, you get those ones differently by how you write them, okay? It's what letter name that you put on them. Like a perfect 8th would be from, say, like G to G. A my, uh, augmented 7th would be you have to literally write on the sheet music a 7th, but then you use, like, accidentals to make it 12 semitones. So example would be... Uh, take that uh, perfect octave or perfect eighth, so G to G, now make that uh, augmented seventh, you're gonna go G to uh, F double sharp, 
Okay, so you're still going to the same key of G, but you're writing it on the F with a double sharp. Okay, so there's ways to get around it, and that's how you get to a perfect eighth and an augmented seventh and doing the same thing. So it's the same thing with the other ones. You just work around it with double sharps or double flats, however you need to do it. Now in this little box below here, I didn't have space up here, and I didn't really want to put it in the middle because the, it, I guess I wanted to leave it separate for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, okay, so here we've got an augmented fourth and a diminished fifth, okay? And they can both be what we call, uh, they can be six semitones. So as you see from perfect fourth to perfect fifth, we've got a, a little jump, okay? And so the perfect fifth, or per diminished fifth and augmented fourth share this one key, okay? And those are the sixth. So that would be like from C to F sharp, could be uh, a perfect four, or an augmented fourth, or uh, C to E, uh, G flat would be a uh, diminished fifth. So there you go. Okay, so that's this little chart here. So if you want, you can write this thing out and uh, yeah, so there's actually an alternate uh, possibility for every single semitone that you can possibly go with because the eight and the four, even though I don't have anything written, they could be diminished fourth and augmented fifth. And this one over here, uh, that could be uh, augmented per, uh, first. So every single one of these has one other optional way to be called, it looks like, which is kind of cool. Okay, anyway, yeah, because I've never actually drawn this chart out. I've always just... Uh, kind of gone off one that I learned from a book. But this one I actually, I kind of expounded on it because in books they usually only show you the basic intervals and I thought I was going to show you all the possibilities. So anyway, yeah. Okay, um, now we're going to move along and go to the next topic and it's kind of more of a review topic but also to give you a little bit more clarity. So let's go to that. Now one of the skills that we're going to need later on in this video is the ability to augment and diminish intervals, okay? And sometimes you're not going to be able to pick which one you do, so you're not always going to be able to draw the bottom, uh, have the bottom note your main note, and you're going to have to go from the top note, okay? So um, what we have here, I would just want to show you and explain how you do uh, augmenting and diminishing tr uh, intervals. I now I think I covered this before. I'm about 95% sure that I think I showed this, although I could be wrong. So I want to cover this again instead of uh, going back through all my videos and trying to find out if I did talk about it or not. <laughs> and if not, if I did talk about it, then it can be a review. And if not, then whatever. Cool. I covered it. Okay. So um, okay now. What, I just know that I covered the topic of augmented and diminished intervals, but I'm not sure if I explained how to do them very well or not. So anyway, okay, so when you're trying to draw, uh, say, a diminished or augmented interval, let's first start with the augmented here. Okay, so we want an augmented third. Now say, say the black is what you're given in an exam or a situation and the orange is what you kind of have to do, or the red or whatever this is. It looks red here, but it kind of looks orange on the board for some reason. Kind of looks weird, I don't know why, but whatever. Maybe it's just the lighting or something. Anyway, okay, so we want an augmented third. So think, remember, augmented is bigger, it's expanding, okay? So augment is bigger, diminished is smaller. So we want to increase the distance or the gap between the two notes. So right here we have a C sharp, and uh, I don't have it written out, but say it says uh, these intervals write a note below what the given note. So say they give you a C sharp, they want you to write uh, the answer. So they give you, okay, I want you to write an augmented third, and here's this note, so drop. So fill in the note that you need to complete this interval. So you have C sharp, so you're like, okay, so I need to, I know I need to go a third, so automatically you draw a third below. Now you have to make sure that it's augmented. Okay, so from C sharp to A would just be a regular old major third. So if major, what you need to do to get to an augmented is you have to go one bigger than a major interval. 
as we learned from our previous lessons. So how do you make something bigger? Well, you can add a flat to it on the bottom. So if it's on the bottom and you add a flat to it, it's getting lower. So it's getting further away from that thing, thus it's expanding, okay? So the flat on the bottom one lowers or expands the interval. If, the if we're drawing one on the top, okay, and I put a flat, it would actually diminish the interval because it's flattening and it's getting closer to the other one. So it does play a big role on which one that you're putting the sharp or the flat, like the top one or the bottom one, okay? So always be like thinking about that. So sharps on the top, I like to think of it as like balloons. So you're lowering the balloon by taking air out of it so it's getting further away. So what's happening, the result's getting bigger or smaller. Like if I want to make the interval bigger by dropping this one, that's cool. So I put a flat or I can make it bigger by putting more air in this one and it raises up so it's getting bigger. If I lower the air in this balloon it gets closer to this and then I've diminished the interval or if I make this one have more air it's going to get closer too. So there's lots of ways you can kind of play around with that. So that's how you get uh, uh, augmented interval. So I like to think of this. See the arrows pointing in directions like that? That's what you can always associate augmented with. Diminished is like this. It's like they're going towards each other closer. So you want to bring them together. So here you uh, say the, the interval asked for in the exam or whatever, or whatever situation you're in is they want to diminish sixth. And so they give you an E. Okay, so first thing you need to do is go down to six. So you go down to G. So you write that in. Okay, so obviously from G to E, what is that? Uh, that occurs in the natural major scale. So like how I'm thinking is I'm thinking, okay, G, okay, what's in the, in the scale of G? E is in the G major scale, so it's a major interval. Thus, uh, from there to there is major six. So I need to lower it uh, quite a bit to get it to be a uh, diminished six. So if I lower it a flat and I make it a G flat, it becomes a minor sixth, okay? Because it was major before. So I have to lower it one more. Oh, whoops, not lower it. I was thinking smaller and lower. <laughs> whoops. Okay, sharp. <laughs> Sorry about that. Slip, I was actually thinking one thing and saying another thing at that point. So what I really meant to say here is, okay, I want to get it closer to this one up here. So if I do one step, it's only a minor. It's only going to be a minor sixth. What I need to do is get it two steps closer. So by putting a sharp on it, it's just a minor, it's just a minor sixth. If I put a, a double sharp on it now, it's a, 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 it's a diminished sixth. So it's getting closer twice. Okay, and you can use, if you need to, you can use the interval chart that I just provided at the last, you know, how many semitones you need. You can use that if you don't know your scales really well. But the faster way, I think, in the long run is um, knowing your scales really well in your head. So you're just like, that's the major scale, that's the interval. That's pretty much how I do it. I just go from this to this note in whatever major scale. I take the bottom note and I go, if I was playing that in a major scale, does this note occur in it? And I'm like, yes or no. If yes, then it's a major a major interval. If it's no, then it's a uh, it's a minor interval, or it's you know an augmented or diminished. But if it's one of those, then it's going to be all like flatted or sharp, like double flatted or double sharped probably. So then it's more obvious. But anyway, so that's sort of how I think through the process. Anyway, so that is how to augment or uh, diminish your intervals. So now we're going to get into the next part of this lesson. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is called inverting intervals, or in, I guess not really talk about is called inverting intervals, that kind of sounds weird, but anyway. <laughs> okay, so basically what we're going to do is show how inverting intervals works. Okay, so as you can see, I've got a lot of cute little drawings going on with multicolors. Yes, very cute. It's like a blue rainbow, sideways, vertically, yeah, anyway. Okay, so first thing you'll notice is what is an inverted interval? Well, it's basically taking one or like the top or the bottom of an interval and flipping it, okay? So 
Okay, let's take a look at this. So right here we have f to a, which is your major third, okay? Now if uh, it said invert this interval, okay? So what you'd have to do is take one note of these and move it up or down an octave. Um, now in this case, it makes way more sense to move the F up because you can move it to the clef without having to draw ledger lines. If you move the A down here, then you have to do two ledger lines and it can get a bit crowded. And, but you could still do that too, unless they restricted you and they said invert all these intervals, invert only the bottom note. Okay. So you'd have to move the bottom note only or the top note only. But for this example, I'm going to show both ways. So whenever you have a major interval going to like inverting, what's going to happen is it's automatically going to become minor. Automatically. You know that whole thing in mathematics when you multiply a positive times a negative, you get a certain type, right? Like positive times positive equals this, positive times negative equals that. It's the same idea except this is how it applies in music, okay? So whenever you have an interval that switches, the major always becomes minor, the minor always becomes major. Because what if we had this, okay? What if we had a minor six and it, I decided to invert it and I inverted this one down? And then I have a major third, okay? So it always goes back and forth. Okay, now on the other side, so I have here, I have a diminished fourth, and if I move this one down and invert it, so this is a C flat, so I move the C flat down an octave and keep this where it's at, now it's a augmented fifth, okay? Why is that? Because now whatever was using this to move it away from each other, on this side, now it's moving closer to each other, okay? That's the idea behind it. So this little chart thing here can help you. So the plus stands for a major, and the minus obviously a minor interval. So major minor. So whenever you're inverting, this is the this is what always happens. Majors become minors or minors become majors, always. That's the given rule. Augmented always become diminished or diminished always become augmented whenever you do an inversion. Okay? Whenever you flip it. Whenever you do an inversion, perfect intervals always stay perfect. So if you have a perfect eighth and you do a inversion and you flip, then you have, say you had A to A, and then you put one down or one up, now you're gonna be on the same key, so it's a perfect unison or perfect one. If you were a uh, perfect fifth, so say it was, this. there's no flat here, okay? So say you took the flat out, this is a perfect fourth, now the C goes down to this, so C to G now is a perfect fifth. So C perfect stays the same. So perfect fourth or perfect fifth, are always going to stay the same like that. They're always going to stay perfect. Okay, so that's the, the... I didn't do a perfect example because I thought it was kind of useless considering there's no change really going on. Um, now, this part is the second part of it. So you can actually predict what type, like what number interval it's going to be just by knowing what the first number is going to be. So in other words, if you know that you have a seventh and it's minor, then automatically you know that if you invert it, it's going to become a major second. How did I know that? Because of this little chart here. As you flip an interval, these things are connected here. That's why I have these little circle things and they're drawn to the color that they're connected with. So eighths and firsts always, whenever you do an inversion, they always are going to invert into the other one. So if you have two you know, C's, and then one of them inverts, it's going to be a C, C to C in an octave apart. If you have a second, so say you're going from G to A, okay, move the A down, now you have a seventh. If you move the G up, you still have a seventh. See? Now, if you have a third, it's going to become a sixth, or if you have a sixth, it's going to become a third, and if you have a fourth, it's going to become a fifth, or a fifth becomes a fourth. So, Using these two charts, you can eat, like in, instantly already know what you're going to get when you do an inversion. So if you have a minor fifth, well, I guess that doesn't really happen. That's a bad example. Okay, say you have a diminished fifth, you're going to get an augmented fourth if you flip it automatically. Okay? So all you really need to do if you're doing an inversion then is if it tells you what note you're going to do, right? Like say... 
say it gives you like one note and it does, you need to fill in the other note and it tells you what interval they want you to write it in, then you have a really easy job. You just fill in the one interval, you just have to figure what, out what it is, and then using this, you can automatically know what the next one is. It's just like, boom, okay, I've got, you know, if it's a minor, then you know it's going to be major, and then you just use this chart, boom, boom, move it up an octave. There's almost no thinking involved. It's very, very easy. Okay? So that's inverting intervals, and we're going to have to invert compound intervals later. And what this is actually useful for is um, in composing, you could be writing out an uh, interval line, and then say you want to use that same melody, but you're going to invert all the intervals, so that you're still using the same kind of, like composers will use that, they'll have the intervals, it's just kind of like a way of mixing stuff up, and you get asked it in theory as well, unfortunately. I always found these the easiest of a lot of things though, it's really fun to do these, because with this little thought process it just works so well. But anyway, so that is inverting intervals, now we're going to do the next and last part of this lesson, which is inharmonic changes in intervals. Okay, so now in this section we're going to talk about inharmonic changes in intervals and with this one there is really no set formula because uh, you're more, well there is sort of a formula but not because you have more options, it's more um, flexible. <laughs> okay, so I'll just explain this. Okay, so say you have A, or A and C. Okay, I'm just using A and C again because they're pretty easy keys and they're in the middle, so it's nice. Okay, now, an inharmonic change, as you know, inharmonics are basically when you have one note but you have another name for it. Okay, so it's the same, same tech, it's like the same pitch but it's a different name. Like G sharp and A flat are the same key or the same pitch. But uh, they're in different, like you'd write them differently on the staff. So, that's what an inharmonic change is, and uh, it does change what it looks like. So let's just look over this. So, okay, now, say I give you, or someone gives you an example, like a thing, and they give you A and C, and they say, okay, give me the, uh, an inharmonic equivalent of A. So change the bottom note. So they want that interval, but they want you to change, the, change it inharmonically, okay? So you'd have to lower this down to the G, or you could put it up to the B if you wanted to. This is why there's no real sets thing, because you could go up or down based on however you feel like. Um, and also based on like the key signature and other stuff down the road, but uh, that's more advanced and whatever. But, uh, and that gets more into melody writing and constructing your key and all this other stuff. But okay, anyway. So say you could go up or down just for now, for that kind of sake. So say you go down, okay, to get to the same key A, you put in a G double sharp. So now G, G sharp is the black key, and then G double sharp is back to the white key, which is normally called A. Okay, so there you go. You're back. Now, the only thing is, this is a totally different interval. Okay, so this was a minor third before, but it's changed. Now, the same thing happens over here. You could go... Okay, I'm going to move this. So now, like, so this is one example. Here's another. What if instead they say move the top one? Okay, well, you can move the top one up or you can move it down. So if you move it up, it's going to be a D double flat. So it's still hitting the same key, but it's going to be a different, uh, it's going to look different on the staff. Or you can move it down. So now it's a B sharp. So B sharp is still C. It's just written differently. So as you can see, this is th four different ways to write the same sounding note, and you could still do another one of these. So, I mean, there's lots of different ways you can write the same sounding note on, like, you could play these two notes all these different times and they'd sound exactly the same to your ear, but in theory, and the way it looks on the staff, it looks completely different. And each one of these has a different uh, interval, okay? So, um, that's in harmonic changes. So basically, I just wanted you to be aware of them. And obviously, you guys know how to already diagnose your intervals, so I'm not going to even need to tell you about those. That's just a waste of time. What I wanted you to know is that inharmonic changes in intervals can happen. They can say to do it in the bottom or the top one by itself, or there's lots of different options, OK? And also the phenomenon of having you know one 
sound, but many different ways to write this, the one sound, but the different intervals. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too confusing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, I think that's about it. So let's get on to some homework. Homework. No. Okay guys, so for your homework, what I would like you to do is, I want you to invert 20 different intervals. Now, for 10 of them, I want you to invert the top note, and for tw uh, the other 10, I want you to invert the bottom note. So how you're gonna do this is you have to do two stages per exercise. One, you have to come up with an interval. So you could write like a perfect fourth, okay? And then for that one, I want you to raise up the bottom note or the top note 10 times like on 10 different exercises, okay? So I guess you'd write, say, 10 different intervals, blah, 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 and then invert each one of them, and uh, like up, then write another 10, and then 10 different ones, and then invert those down. So you have to basically write 40 intervals. <laughs> so this should get you lots of good practice with this. And uh, so remember the formula for switching it. So you really only have to think for the first one, and then after that, it's pretty simple. Okay? All right, so try to like write one note, then write an interval that you want that note to be. So just write one at random, and then try to figure out what that note would actually, that interval would be, and then flip it over, and then uh, invert it. Okay, now for the change, uh, I'd like you to t uh, write out 20 intervals, and inharmonically change the top note for 10 of them and inharmonically change the bottom note for 10 of them. Okay? All right. So after you do that, that should be pretty good. And uh, maybe study the chart for the intervals with the semitones if you think that's gonna be helpful for you. Or if you've already got a good grasp on it, then that's all good anyway. Okay, so I hope you guys had fun. Hope you guys learned something and enjoyed the lesson and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. See ya. Have a good one. Later.